Devil Sniper, this is episode number four of our career mode with West Ham United on FIFA 14. And firstly, I just want to say thank you for the support over the first three episodes. It has been absolutely astounding. But without further ado, we're going to go straight into the Daily Jaffa. The Daily Jaffa, number one for sport, number one for transfer news, and at the new price of 30 pence. So the question is, where do we start today? So I'm going to start with some uh, some plugging. Yes, <laughs> my journey, the journeyman career mode, episode number 12 is out, top right hand corner. Check the channel for that episode, it's a cracking episode, really enjoyed that one. And we're going to move on to new West Ham manager, John Locke splashes out on a new Audi RS6 as a reward for getting the West Ham United job. Locke felt the treat wasn't such a big deal as the media always seems to make out. Locke is quoted as saying, when a dream comes true and you get the best job in football, would you not splash out? Anyway, I must thank DG and DS for getting me such a cracking deal. I am sure if Locke gets the results, the fans won't mind. So, continuing on, bottom right hand corner, do you have a story for the Daily Jaffa? If so, check out the link in the description for the all-new West Ham United forum, where you can have a greater insight into the football club, and of course, you can have a bit more of a chat with my good self, if you wish. The main story. The Blonde Bombshell. West Ham move for 3 million rated Hughes. Will Hughes, the incredible young talent from Derby County, who has shown determination since breaking into the Derby first team, and has lift, lit up the championship when asked about the potential move to West Ham United, he said, The chance to play in the top division of English football is an amazing opportunity. And to do it under the managerial skills of Mr Locke is just a cherry on top. The 18-year-old show real passion towards speculation of West Ham, West Ham signing him up. Reporter Max BG, that was taken from the forum. Thank you ever so much. Hope you enjoyed the Daily Jaffa today. And now let's get right into this episode. So first things first, as you can see, I am on my database. Unfortunately, my database doesn't seem to be working because I can't make the emails bigger, which is a little bit frustrating, but hey-ho, we'll just have to deal with it. As you can see, Derby have accepted 2.9 million there. That is fantastic. Now, Lanzini, I actually went to watch him. As you know, I was out in Argentina. I went to watch the lad. He looks sensational, a little bit weak from my point of view, but a £9 million price tag is huge. Now, regarding Petric, the overall consensus from you guys was to let him go. At the end of the day, 3.4 million is going to turn into about 2.8 million, something like that, what we're going to get back for him, which is a fantastic bit of business because at the end of the day, we're only going to get one season out of him. He's going to turn 33. He's going to be a chocolate teapot and it's absolutely pointless so we need to utilize the 45 grand a week that he currently earns now will hughes is on a two thousand pound a week contract we're going to give him 2250 i'm going to give him a four-year deal and i'm going to offer him important first team player because he's not going to be crucial this season perhaps in the next contract negotiation he will become crucial and as you can see yes i have fixed the laptop. I don't understand this modern stuff. It's uh, totally different from when I was when I was originally managing. We didn't have all this fandangled stuff. But as you can see, I can I have fixed it now, which is fantastic. So we should be able to see the emails in uh, in readable context. So Sam Byram, three point three million. Now before I actually put the offer in, I did speak to DS and DG and said, look, this is a lot of money. He's a young lad. Do you think it's a good idea? They agreed wholeheartedly and they allowed it. And essentially, I was allowed to do that because I didn't pay a single penny for Gabs, which I think is fantastic. We've got him on a, on a three-year deal, £15,000 a week, no goal bonus, and he will sign on the 1st of July 2014. So that gives us a whole season. And that allows people the opportunity to prove themselves to me. Now, at the end of the day, we've got a couple of strikers. We're probably short in that department, but we can make do, I feel, personally. We'll have to wait and see. We might need to take someone in on loan, but that will be generally down to you guys. Now, looking from a media point of view, it was interesting to see that Juventus picked up Petr Cech for 7.5 million. I would have loved to have had a crack at Diego Costa. We just couldn't afford him at the end of the day. And obviously, we couldn't afford Brian Reese either. I mean, that's a lot of money, and I definitely wasn't interested in Lucas. I feel we've got a sturdy midfield. Now we've added to it. It's fantastic. But capturing Gabs, I think, is a fantastic coup for the club. We fought off the likes of Arsenal, Chelsea, and Tottenham, who were prepared to come in, take him away, and use him for a season or two. We've got him on a three-year deal, which I think is absolutely sensational, and I think he'll be an absolutely a huge hit at the club. I really do think he'll become a fan's favourite. No, he'll he'll be up alongside the like of Mark Noble, Kevin Nolan, and of course, one of the favourites, D'Army, who always gives 100%. And as you can see, from the Petrich deal, we did get £2.9 million. Pounds. Now, I think that's a good... Good bit of business because now we recoup the £45,000 a week. It allows us to do a little bit more, which I think is fantastic. As you can see, we got a reply from Will Hughes. 
he's more than happy to come to West Ham United for four years and on £2,250 a week, which is sensational. So I have no hesitation in signing this lad. That is the first signing of my reign as West Ham manager. And I've got to say, I think that's a sensational capture. I think we have captured one of the best, brightest, up-and-coming English talents at this moment in time. Now, the GTN is something that I am going to amend. It's not something I'm going to pay great attention to. The reasons why? Because I have you guys. You guys are far superior when it comes to recommending players and defining attributes of players than the GTN. Now, the GTN is a fantastic little system. I'm not trying to, to slate it or say that EA have done something wrong. I think it's fantastic. It's probably better for when you're doing a career mode by yourself. As you know, my career modes, I prefer to have a lot more interaction and I prefer to have you guys dictating where we go for players, how we go with careers, etc. It makes it more fun, and it inspires me a lot more than uh, having a computer-generated GTN tracker, which uh, for me is just pointless. Plus, the scouts we've got are about as useful as a chocolate teapot sitting on a oven, which is not very useful by any stretch of the imagination. So, what I need you guys to do is analyse what we need. I'm thinking perhaps a makeshift striker and a centre-back. Just to give us a little bit of added depth. That would be my uh, my area of uh, sort of where we need to go. As you can see, I did have a little scout at Albrighton from Aston Villa. I was a little bit curious to see how he's got 12 months, I believe, left on his contract. He looks okay. You know, he looks like a half-decent player. He looks like he's got a bit of potential. We do obviously have Ravel Morrison who can play on the right side. But... We've also got a little bit of like Diami who can play that right side. But if we do go over 4-2-3-1, we don't have anybody who can really play that ram position. I know Ravel can play it, but I don't think it's a sort of position that's suited to the likes of um, Diami. So that could be a position we're looking at. The formation at this moment in time has caused me a bit of problems now because I want to integrate certain things. I want to go with two up top. I think that's a, a fundamental fact. One of the problems we West Ham have had under Big Sam was scoring goals and that's something I want to rectify I want to be able to create more chances have more options up front so I will be going with two up front and that leaves us in a very very tricky situation of how we play the players we have because we have some magnificent players we have Ravel we have Diami of course we have Nolan we have Noble you know the list goes on it's going to be very difficult for us to integrate them all into the same team so we're going to have to work on that so i'll be looking forward to your comments and suggestions for that and as you can see leeds united are more than happy with the 3.3 million and i've got to say it is a huge chunk of change and it's a big big transfer fee for someone so young but i honestly firmly believe this lad is going to be sensational so i'm going to give him fifteen thousand pounds a week four year deal and he's going to be an important first team player because don't forget we do have some depth in the defensive area and at the end of the day there's no reason why the players that we have at this moment in time will lose their place. It's going to be very interesting to see how training goes because I expect it to be very, very competitive. And as you can see, Will Hughes is fantastically over the moon to come to the club. And I've got to say, you know, dealing with Derby was, was quite a pleasure. You know, they have lost a very important player, you know, a very important part of their puzzle. We have gained a fantastic youngster and I can't wait to start working with him. I really feel he's going to be sensational. And on the other hand, Derby were rewarded with £2.9 million, which is a, a good amount of money for a championship side. So, as we move on, I get a request in for Diara. Now, Diara is 32, as you know. Not the greatest of players, in my personal opinion. I don't think he could do a job for me because at the end of the day, when it comes to playing a CDM, I would put Diarmi straight in. There's no there's no if, buts, or maybe. Diarmi for me, is a better player. As you can see, the young lad wants to take over Petrit's vacant position. And this is why I want to change to two up top, because I want this young lad to go side by side with our big AC. I want him to go side by side with Andy Carroll, as I think they could form a very potent strike force and become a very, very devastating strike force. That is the plan. I can only hope that is uh, the way it's going to go. But as you can see, Sam Byram has accepted our contract terms. I'm going to do the simple, which is say... Thank God. Oh, yes. That is sensational. That is a brilliant buy. I'm so chuffed with that. Pelly Ruddock, on the other hand, is going to be going out on loan to Wickham for the season, which I think is fantastic. Give him a chance for him to, to grow and uh, see if he's got the uh, the stuff that we need as a, as a club. You know, he might come back. He could be sensational. He might not. We'll just have to assess it come the end of the season. As you can see, we sent a scout to Brazil. And he came back with three players. Now, I do feel a centre-back is a player that we do need to look at. 
So I expect you guys to come back with uh, some interesting recommendations. Nothing too obvious, nothing too silly. No Nathan Ackers, etc. Really put some thought into it. And um, you know what sort of centre-back I like. If you've watched the first series of West Ham, you know exactly what sort of centre-back I like. So that's the sort of centre-back I'm after. Um, and I think that would be fantastic. Now, as you can see, I have changed to a 4-4-2. This is where I need you guys to give me your input. How are we going to manage this? Because I do want to play two up top. I don't think a 4-1-2-1-2 is going to work because that only allows me to play, you know, we've got to fill the left and the right side. The army's going to be CDM. So I think a 4-4-2 is a good one. But then again, it's going to cost me with Noble and Nolan. I really want to balance the whole team out. I don't want to go with a 3-5-2, even though it would probably be the, the perfect one. But I do want to have two strikers up top. So I'm going to need you guys to go huge and start recommending some lineups and some formations, which I'll be uh, looking forward to having a read of. If you could post them in the comment section below, I will be dead chuffed. And if you would like to have a double upload over the weekend, if you'd like to see an episode on Saturday and on Sunday, also let me know in the comment section below and uh, I will do my best to get one up Saturday, one up Sunday. Until next time, guys, hope you enjoyed this episode. I will catch you later.